3D printing has come a really long way over the past handful of years where it's now becoming easier and easier to get started with 3D printing and working with a variety of different materials. Everything from PLA to rapid PLA, maybe you have PETG or even things like ASA and a lot of the 3D printers and their slicers now have predefined profiles for these different filaments that you might be working with. But what are you gonna do when you have a brand new filament that you've never worked with before? And a perfect real world example of this that I'm going through right now, which is why I'm making this video, is the brand new Polymaker High Temp PLA. This is a brand new version of a filament that I don't think anybody else has put out there just yet. And it's gonna allow me to print with this filament and allow it to withstand higher temperatures so it could sit out in the sun and not warp or anything crazy like that, what we typically see with your PLA filaments. And I'm gonna be building out a pro profile and testing it on the Centauri Carbon and I want to show you the exact steps that I go through when it comes to fine tuning and finding the optimal print settings and not pulling my hair out with some of the confusions that's out there. Now I'm going to keep things super simple. There are a lot of different calibration options that are now baked into your slicers that you're working with. I'm going to be working with Elegoo Slicer which is an offshoot of Orca Slicer and should have the exact same calibration steps that we see in Orca Slicer and is applicable to a wide variety of different 3D printers that are out there. Now to access these you're going to go up into the calibration menu in the very top where we get access to things like temperature, flow rate, pressure advance, retraction testing, uh, tolerance testing, there's flow rate, VFA testing, and potentially even more. Now I'm going to keep this as simple as possible because I really only ever focus on two of those tests. There is a lot more that you could dig in and dive in and test out with those but the two that I really focus on is a temp tower and the retraction testing and then we might touch on another. And the very first thing that I do is make sure that I have the appropriate printer identified and in place with the correct nozzle size in the slicer that I'm working with. And then I typically will try and find an existing print profile that I can steal from or borrow from in this case. So here uh, Elegoo has for the Centauri Carbon, they have a whole bunch of different predefined print profiles that you can work with. Uh, I'm going to work with the Rapid PLA Plus option for this spool here. Hopefully that works out okay. But what we're going to do is click on the edit option to the right. And then if you click save at the very top it'll allow you to make a copy of this profile because I don't want to modify the existing profile I want to create my own unique profile so I'm going to rename it Polymaker HTPLA and click OK. And for our very first test, we're going to run a temperature tower, which I'm going to come up into the calibration settings and select temperature. And this is where you can rely on the information provided on most of the spools of your filament should have some basic print profile information. So this says uh, 210 to 230. The default here in this slicer for PLA is 230 at the starting temperature is the hottest, and then it'll drop down to 190. And I'm just going to let this run to see what kind of results results that we get. When you click OK, it automatically generates the appropriate temperature tower for you. And when you click slice, you can actually see not only how long is this going to take, but if you come up into the menu, the drop down at the very top, you should have an option that you can select temperature and we can see exactly how this temperature tower is going to print with each of the different temperature options. And here are the results of our first test. This in general looks fantastic right off of the bat off of the Centauri Carbon, which is amazing to see. I was hoping for a lot more deviation in this, but it's actually a, a great example of where you can have a little bit of a challenge in just determining what is the optimal temperature. But in this temperature tower test, there are a number of different tests that this is performing. Everything from overhangs to bridging to there is some internal details that are gonna produce some stringing inside there that we can check on. And if I look very closely here at the bridging, I can see that there's a little bit of sagging at 230 and 225, but at 220, it's actually looking really good as well as 215. And there's minimal stringing that's occurring inside with those little cones and the cones have all printed fairly cleanly inside there. And it's slightly degrading as it's going up and lowering in temperature here. And thanks to our very first test, I know that the best potential options for me and this filament are going to be 220 and 215. So I'm going to come back into my slicer and go into the edit for the actual filament and then change the first layer to 220 and then the other layers to 215. Again, this is all going to be dependent on the filament that you're working with, the, the three printer that you're working with, and just your visual preference. But there is a lot of different testing options that we're seeing with this particular test and it's just a really simple, straightforward option that should get you started 
started with the correct temperature settings. And then I wanna try and fine tune some of the stringing or wisping that I was seeing on the inside section of the print here. And again, this might differ based on the material that you're printing with or your printer. But to do this, we're gonna go back into the calibration option at the top and choose retraction test. And then here, I'm gonna leave the defaults as zero and two millimeters at a 0.1 millimeter increment and click OK. Uh, do I wanna save the project? No, I don't wanna save any of the information. And then click slice and it's gonna generate, again, a pretty quick print. This is, should take about 10 minutes or less depending on your print option. And we're gonna let this run. Now this was a quick eight minute print off of the Centauri Carbon and it's gonna be very hard to see with the results that I'm getting there. But if you look very closely here on the very, very bottom, we have some string that's going from one side to the other. And each one of these little notches here that we're seeing on the ring here going all the way up, each one of those is 0.1 millimeters, starting it from zero, zero, all the way up to two millimeters here. So if I count up three is where I'm starting to see that there's no stringing. I still see some fine wisping back and forth here, but I believe I can use a 0.3 as my retraction setting. So if we go back into our slicer and go into the edit mode for our filament profile that we created, I can come under the setting override section and check off the first option for length and change the default here for this filament that I copied is set at 0 0.8 and I'm going to change that to a 0 0.3 and save that back. And from here, I can just run a quick test print to confirm that everything's printing according to plan. So I'm gonna right click inside of the build plate of my slicer. Under handy models, there are a bunch of different options typically that you can choose from, like a Benchy. And in this case, Elegoo has their Elegoo cube here that I can choose to print. And I'm gonna slice this and send it to the printer to check out the results. And about 30 minutes later, our test print is finished here and it looks really good with this new filament and the Centauri Carbon. I have just a ever so slight wisp that I'm seeing on the inside there, but in general, this print turned out fantastic. And I think it's ready for me to actually start running down some larger prints with this filament. However, there's one more optional test that I'll sometimes run to try and further increase my overall print speed and just get better print results at printing faster. And that's by coming in and running a calibration, but we're gonna this time go under the more option and choose max flow rate. And from here, we have the basic options that are gonna to default to five, 20, and 0.5 millimeters. We're gonna click okay, and it's gonna generate our test that we can print. And as it's printing, it's gonna incrementally increase the speed of the filament that you're printing with until we can find a failure point. And the combination of this filament and the Centauri Carbon are just working way too well for this testing. There was literally no failures that occurred here as it was increasing the speeds. So we're gonna go back and rerun this, but we're gonna go until max failure. To do that, I'm gonna go back into the calibration settings, go back under flow rate, and this time I'm gonna change this to 10 millimeters as a starting point and increase this to 40, and we're gonna change this to one millimeter per second. This is just gonna help make it easier when it comes to actually calculating the end value once we have run this full print. And these are the exact kind of results that I was looking for where we can clearly see where the print was starting to separate from itself as it was increasing its volumetric speed as it was going from the bottom to the top. If you actually turn the print to where the bend is, you can actually see all the incremental values that we're gonna wanna measure here. So we're gonna try and find exactly where the print started to separate. And I typically try to go like one or two lower than that just to be on the safe side. And you're gonna need some calipers for this. And I can see when I actually measure this that mine is 14 millimeters. And then with a very small amount of math, we can take the value that we got from our digital caliper and times that by our incremental value. Then we can add that together with the base value that we started with for the calibration. Then we can go right back into our slicer, go into our profile, and on the very first filament tab at the bottom is max volumetric speed, which mine was set to 21 and now is gonna be slightly faster at 24. This will allow me to print slightly faster with this filament while still maintaining good results. Now to test this all out, I have a print that we're gonna be running here on the Centauri Carbon and I'm gonna let this run overnight. And this is a great time for me to say a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They are the makers of the fantastic 
Elegoo Centauri Carbon, which is this budget-friendly Core XY user-friendly 3D printer that has all of these amazing pre-built out profiles that for the most part I have just been rocking with for any type of filament that I've been working with. And with some exceptions like this one here today, I'm building out my own custom profiles, which makes it so easy using Elegoo Slicer, which is again an offshoot of Orca Slicer. If you're interested in more information about the Elegoo Centauri Carbon or any of Elegoo's filaments, you'll find links to those down below. And let's take a look at this oversized planter that finished printing. This took nine and a half hours to print and the results are super clean and impressive. This was all printed at a point two layer height. I scaled this up so that I could actually get this uh, fitting a plant that I have specifically that I want to have seeded outside and love that it has these little feet that attach to it. But most importantly, the print itself, there's like no stringing whatsoever on this and it turned out super crispy and clean. Very, very excited to see how this printed with my updated profile here on the Centauri Carbon. I also wanted to point out that if you're ever upgrading to a larger size nozzle, like a 0.6 or 0.8, these calibration tests are fantastic for, again, dialing in your print settings when it comes to working with these larger nozzles. This is all printed with a 0.8 nozzle, and this is just a super chunky, fast planner that I printed here. And then I also printed this watering can. Uh, this could definitely use a little bit of improvement, but in general, it was a really quick, this was like a two and a half hour print for this watering can. But this particular planner turned out so good, even with those thicker layer lines at a 0.4 millimeter layer height. And if you're looking for more detailed information on each of the calibration options, there's actually a GitHub page directly linked in Elegoo Slicer as well as Orca Slicer that'll give you more detailed explanations of each of these individual tests. I'm also gonna highly recommend you check out Covenant Customs detailed video on walking through each of those calibration options. I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. I'm actually working on some new filament profiles specifically for the Centauri Carbon that I'm going to be sharing with my Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in things like that, you'll find information over in my Patreon all about that. And definitely don't get overwhelmed with any of the calibration steps. If anything, just follow these two basic ones of the Temp Tower and Retraction Test and you'll be well on your way. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.